Yeah. I suspect this is a conversation that was happening in the background for some time. I'm not suggesting that people approach people with a tapping app methodology, but I'm pretty sure that this conversation was already being had in the rounds and yeah. thought processes were being established. So the moment Potter was indexed and the moment that indexing was was not pushed back by Brighton or Potter, it was a done deal. It was, you're right. Simon, according to TalkSport sources, the decision to sack Thomas Tuchel was taken a week ago before the West Ham game. Yep. It was then the American ownership identified Graham Potter as a number one target. It yep. was felt that Tuchel was too much of a loner, hadn't bought into the American strategy and that he was inflexible. Now, mm -hmm. there had been friction over the, the transfer strategy, so much so the transfers were all board-endorsed. Yeah. So they were, in effect, club signings as opposed to Tuchel signings. Well, they will always be board-endorsed because, unless I've missed the memo, football managers don't have any money to buy players. They have the money that the club gives them, so it'll always be board-endorsed. Mm. Look, this is a classic scenario. It was too much of a loner? Well... I mean, football managers, by definition, are loners because often they're on their own and they are the standard bearer for the team and they are often on their own with the assistant manager being the shoulder to cry on for the players and they are sometimes at odds with the owners. There's nothing wrong with being at odds with the owners. There's everything wrong with taking that sort of issue into the public domain like Scott Parker did. I would suspect that Thomas Tuchel um, uh, was challenged um, during the summer by certain things that he felt weren't right um, and maybe didn't put his best face forward for the owners. When you've got a new ownership model, I had something that's very similar with Steve Koppel. I'm not suggesting that the scale is the same, but it's all relative to, to the time. And Steve Koppel was a hero of the fans, and when I walked through the door, what I got was a monosyllabic, grunting football manager that did me a favour every now and again by deigning to speak to me. And I found that very difficult to deal with and very difficult and very but predictable, very troubling because you think that the person that you would most have the best relationship with is the manager. And I suspect that probably behind the scenes... Thomas Tuchel has not been in the best uh, of humour, not been in the best disposition, not really connected with the owner. You just don't connect sometimes. And then and then to compound it, the team hasn't produced results. So the Americans have probably walked in the door and gone, OK, we've got this open mentality of wanting to work with guys, develop a team, we spent a lot of money to get to this point, and we are ambitious to push forward. And then you've got a manager that maybe isn't just connecting with you. So then you get a little bit fed up with that. You think, OK, all right, well, I'll give you some latitude. I've brought you a lot of players, and you know clearly they're players that you want as well. We've endorsed them. Um, but then you don't produce a team that's winning. Yeah. And then you start producing some lightweight excuses and start bemoaning everything around you. And that'll do, thank you very much. It's, I don't think it's anything more dramatic than that. Yeah. Would you, if you were Tony Bloom or Paul Barber, would you put conditions on Potter? Yes, like, I would. Like, don't come back for the backroom staff, don't come back yeah, for I any would. of our players. Yeah, I would. I mean, it, look, the framework of the football club is very important that it doesn't, it's not there to benefit Graham Potter's opportunity in someone else's business, place of business. Graham Potter has been given a great opportunity by Brighton and he gave Brighton some very good service. Very curious, isn't it? When a guy wins three games out of 25 last year, subsequently gets moved to the former champions of Europe for £6 million salary, but that is what it is. That's the nature of football. It moves like that. But but by the same token, if I'm at Brighton, I want to protect my pitch. Again, I had the same situation, Steve Bruce going to Birmingham. Again, the scales are different, but the relativity is there. And I made sure that David Sun and his little motley crew couldn't come back and pillage and plunder the framework that I've got. Because that's what happens. You get this wonderful reward of patronising a manager, giving him an opportunity, allowing him to do his job, and then he comes back and unwinds your structure by going, I'll take your academy coaches, I'll take your assistant manager, I'll take your assistant coaches, I'll look at your playing squad that you bought for me, and I'll start to take those guys as well. And I think there should be some caveats. And Brighton, Paul Barber's no fool, and certainly was Tony Bloom. They will protect their pitch as much as they can, not just with 20 million quid, but making sure that this doesn't become an environment for Chelsea to prosper from. They've already got your manager. And they've paid for that privilege, but they've taken your manager. Yeah. They've got the vision. Yeah. Whatever the vision is, Chelsea got the vision when the vision arrived. They didn't have the foresight to, to say Graham Potter when he was at Swansea. They have it on the back of Graham Potter doing a decent job at, and, at Chelsea. And as you might expect, Simon, uh, Brighton had their ducks in a row as well. Because it's my understanding that they then got their mind very much in place a few days ago as to yeah. who they were going to get if Potter goes, sorry, not if, when. Well, they were very, you know, they've talked about succession programmes. You can't forecast that a manager who's doing so well and there's such harmony between manager, manager, ownership model, chief executive and playing squad is going to be plucked out of the sky with something as rare, as rare as an English manager getting a top six job. Yep. I mean, you look at that at the last 25 appointments in the top six clubs and ask yourself how many have been English or British managers. I would say it's probably 10% at the tops. So this is as rare as Rocking Horse. And he's come along and he's got himself an opportunity. 
how big the, I mean you can't blame Potter no because what you know opportunities and are, were saying that yesterday we you can't, can't blame, blame him. him it's disappointing because you think that ultimately you've earned the right to keep a manager but he has unlike people like Marcus Silva when they jump shit from Watford to Everton yeah Potter has earned his stripes at Brighton to take the next step up now whether that next step up is too far for him we will see yeah Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport